Okay guys, this is the um, AT Tiny Code. Um, the majority of this um, was lifted directly from this website provideyourown.com um, for doing the secret Arduino um, voltmeter measurement. Um, I'll put a link um, down below as well. Um, but what this basically takes you through is it's this code here for reading the um, the voltage. So that function there is directly in here. Um, one difference you will notice is the this, and this is the calibrated um, figure that I've gotten from my AT Tiny. Um, and so what you must do is if you run the code first, the stock figure, um, you then need to use that figure in what you measure on your um, so sorry you run that figure and then you you, you look at the result of the read VCC function um, and then you use that as part of this equation here um, so you've got this is what you could get back from read VCC this is what you've measured it independently with a voltmeter um, so you get that 1.1 multiplied by the reading from your voltmeter divide that by the figure that's been returned by this function here um, and then you multiply that by the result of this multiply by 1023 and multiply by 1000 and that will give you a figure very similar to this and in my case it was this figure so then what you do is you change this part of the function with the figure that you've worked out and now that is effectively that function or for want of a better description calibrated so every time you do the read VCC function that should return something that's pretty accurate um, a couple of things to note um, I don't know how other people have done it but to actually be able to it's one thing to read this but then to get it out um, obviously there's no USB interface um, you know there's no output um, as far as uh, display or anything like that of course you could configure one but there's nothing by default so what I did was I used the software serial library um, and configured that and when I did my breadboard that I showed in the, the first video of uh, programming the AT Tiny using um, an Arduino as an ISP. Um, I configured a uh, um, hooked up on the breadboard um, an output pin. Um, what I did find was that I had issues with um, trying to read back over the when I was using the Arduino as an ISP. So what I did was I took a um, CH340 based um, USB serial adapter. Um, and I just hooked that up and then um, in the Arduino IDE um, that would appear under ports so I was able to select the COM port of my USB to serial adapter and then just did serial monitor um, it doesn't matter if you're not going to code it over that interface or anything like that it doesn't matter at all um, it will just show what's been input across that serial interface um, so in doing that um, after the chip had been coded, basically every one second it's going to do a read VCC and it's going to do a, um, a serial printout. Um, and it was that figure that I then was able to put into this equation to work out that um, reference. That is what is done for the reference, and then as far as the um, main thing here, we're setting pin 0 and the AT Tiny 85 is output um, we're then calling the read VCC function and it's putting that into a, an inter um, integer variable PWMV um, so that's going to take the results of this put it in a PWMV just for testing I was putting it in there um, so that'll output the voltage across that serial interface once every second once you've got it calibrated um, this is something you could just comment out it's not needed um, you could remove the code completely at, at that point as well if you really wanted to um, but 
since it's only doing the one functions memory or usage or anything like that it's not really a, an issue um, what it's then doing is taking that figure and forming a map operation um, so it's saying that the figure initially and um, that's be, that's going to be output from the read VCC is going to be between 0 and 5000 and it's going to map that so basically scale it down um, to between something between 0 and 255 now that's where you're going to lose a bit accuracy um, but this is because we're doing a PW I mean an analog rate um, on that pin and basically it um, on pin 0 we're going to output that value and that value has to be between 0 and 255 so that's why we need to scale it down um, so what we're then doing it here is just as a final thing it outputs the scaled value so if you hook this up to a um, using serial monitor um, and let's say a USB serial adapter you'd see basically say equals it would output what the raw reading is so to speak from the battery uh, which will be between 0 and 5000 and then straight after it it's going to output what the scaled value is um, and that's it really from this is not doing any balancing or anything like that it's just purely reading um, and this is basically going to um, set that PWM pin 0 um, and that's the input then of the um, opto isolator um, and that's it nothing too fancy um, okay some things to say that caught me out initially when I was doing this um, the additional board manager URLs if you're gonna <coughs> want to program an AT tiny um, and an ASP what you will need is to come into preferences in the settings and you've got the additional board manager URLs um, it looks like you only put one line in initially but then if you click this it pops it out now I've got two lines in here the Arduino one, uh, the .ASP8266, I've been using for a long time, that's fine. But the AT Tiny one, I found a few different um, repositories. Um, and they worked, except the software serial didn't work on a lot of them. Which was really frustrating, kept getting memory errors and lots of different things. Um, and it was proven pretty um, infuriating and then I finally stumbled on this uh, repository for the board managers once I put that in it worked great after that and um, I think the software serial library is built into the board uh, manager descriptions so that worked great so I'll put those below as well because that it took me a little while to find those and it was a bit infuriating um, okay so that's the sketch there and um, as I mentioned earlier in the video I am um, have also done a fritzing diagram and this is fritzing um, and you'll, this will look familiar because this was the original um, breadboard I did which shows the 330 ohm resistor from this is pin 0 that I mentioned earlier there hooking up through there to the um, opto isolator um, and the opto isolator is shining from layman's terms and, my, and I am a layman so <laughs> it's my terms it's uh, shining an LED internally and then that light level has been measured and um, so there's no direct electrical connection um, so yeah so that feeds into the um, opto isolator pin 1 then the uh, negative then feeds across from the AT tiny um, to the pin here on uh, the opto isolator and then on the output um, we have ground VCC um, and the VCC goes through the two resistors which is 330 ohm resistor and a 47 ohm resistor and then there's a direct connection from VCC to the um, the pin that you use them for measuring um, so that's that side of things um, what I have done also is a Fritzen diagram showing the WeMOS D1 that I mentioned earlier. Now you can see it there but then there's a WeMOS D1 breakout board um, so I can bring that across here um, I don't think it was really necessary but just for the case of clarity so this whole line of pins the solder going between each of these pins 
um, and that allows us to give 5 volts on each one of these pins and then these are the same soldered straight down this line on the back of the board and that gives us ground pins um, and then it's this third pin is actually the data pin so you've got D2, D3 as I mentioned in the video I've skipped D4 because that's going to be used by the temperature monitoring um, normally you can just change the pin but because we're using the Wemos shield it's already it's done in the traces of the board so I don't want to start cutting traces and then rerouting it when I can just skip it on this side because it does make a difference so I'm using D0 there 5, 6, 7, 8 and that's my 7 battery connection so your 7S there okay so that's the, the two fritzing diagrams you can use there um, I've just used this to represent the battery that you'll be and this is the one battery that you're monitoring um, I just used that as a, an example of a LiPo type battery um, okay so that's those two um, the last one is the Arduino code itself um, sorry okay the second set of the code is the code for the uh, Wemos uh, Mini D1 which is basically in the SP8266 um, this has been a bit of a mashup so I do appreciate the other people that have put stuff out there and uh, I've borrowed bits and pieces um, so yeah so these two are a must to change um, you'll need to input your SSID and your password um, it's going to start a web server on port 80 um, this is where you define what you're using for your um, cell monitoring where it's connected up so I've actually said D1 there and I think that should be D0 um, I say that because I've only tested the first two works for two should work for fine for the rest of them um, hopefully um, <coughs> so yeah so this is some of the unused code that we're not going to use at the moment for um, cut off some um, warnings although we do use this um, which basically just gives a warning and then it says what would be a cut off but it just outputs something on the serial monitor so at the moment we um, start up connect the Wi-Fi network um, sets all the pin modes to input that have been set in the um, variables above um, it checks for the cells um, and then detects the active cells um, goes through and basically counts up the cells and as it goes through it'll print out one two three four five six seven and thing detects the total number of cells um, gives a two second wait and then starts in the main loop um, and in the main loop it does a pulse in um, high um, a pulse in low and then this function's called I'll hold my hands up totally this is not my uh, work this guy called Techmon um, who's done one for um, an e-bake uh, BMS which works uh, I believe he's got working great and he uses an LCD display and things so I've taken parts of the code um, and just reworked it for the ESP so at the bottom it's where we have the uh, PW1 convert um, I've been playing with this figure um, in his code it's 5000 UL because that should be the, um, what the maximum could be um, it's probably best if I hadn't tweaked it it's maybe put that back at 5000 um, but yeah so that's going to run um, you're passing the two variables in from the high and low um, that, you've, that you've read um, and then you've got to get a an integer output and then you're going to return that back here um, I'm not going to try and steal the guy's work and explain it he's done it pretty well in his video so I'll place a link down below um, then we're running through um, just done an array for these cells um, it's going to store what you've worked out in the array um, you'll notice that it's only checking the cell um, if it returned is um, got set as true above um, otherwise there's not, no point in you know reading the cell if you know that there's nothing connected to it um, then what we're doing is there's some little bit of uh, HTTP um, HTML code sorry um, 
and we're just going to basically run through, output the voltages, um, and then at the end, as part of that function, it just calculates what the total voltage is, and then just outputs it. Um, I'm converting that to a float and dividing by a thousand, just so it displays a little bit easier. Could technically do that with the other voltages as well, uh, but I've just left those as many volts for now, and uh, millivolts for now. Um, there's some of the other bits and pieces that I've left in, which I'll output only on the serial monitor, and it doesn't do anything in the web page, but I can quite easily change that. Um, and it's just setting out a warning on low voltage, warning on cutoff limit, and those are set above. Um, and that is really the code. Um, nothing too much more. Um, sort of a quick and dirty hack together. Um, this is something where it was getting the the optical isolator part working for myself. That was the tricky part. So um, kind of recreating Technomon's work, but I've got that working now. So then it's just kind of beautifying this, and this could be changed to code red, MQTT. Um, could make it email in. There's loads of different options. So um, so yeah. So that's those. Like I say, I've put both sets of code and both printing diagrams in an MQTT. Um, and yeah, works really well. Okay, cheers guys.